Here are eight tips that I developed after helping hundreds of clients with their patents and trademarks and speaking with thousands of inventors. My name is James Yang. I'm a patent attorney, engineer, and author, and I've been doing this since 2004. The first tip is very simple. Just do what you know. Invent in the core competencies of your company. For you solo inventors, if you know a hobby really well, then think of ideas to improve your hobby. Don't try to invent in areas in which you have little experience. Most of your ideas will fail. Tip number two, set aside enough funds to get through the entire patent process. There's a certain level of uncertainty. For example, the first office action is typically a rejection and you need to have enough funds to respond. Don't be discouraged and quit. Instead, have an attorney take an independent review of that office action. If justified, have the response prepped and filed. It's well worth it. Many inventors don't set aside or commit enough money to get through the process and they prematurely abandon their application. They could have had a patent if they just went that extra mile and overcame that first roadblock. Tip number three, write a business plan. If you can't convince yourself on paper that you're gonna make money, then you probably can't make money in the real world. Also, you'll realize that there's a lot of guesswork in the projected revenue and expenses. If you can't accept the uncertainty, then launching your product isn't the right move for you. Tip number four, do a Google image search before paying a patent attorney like me to do a paid search for you. If you find something, that's great. You just saved yourself some money. A Google image search is simple to perform. Type in search terms for your invention into Google, then click on the images link at the top of the page. Look through those images to find your invention. If you don't find anything, then you can hire a patent attorney to confirm your results. Tip number five, use a non-disclosure agreement or NDA when you tell other people about your idea. The NDA protects your idea when your invention is not patent protected or before you filed your patent application. The non-disclosure agreement requires the other party to keep your invention secret. For example, manufacturers and investors should sign the non-disclosure agreement before you discuss your idea with them. Now, if you're hiring an engineer to help build your product, you need to own all of the ideas that they contribute to your product. In this case, use an independent contractor's agreement, which requires them to assign all of their invention rights to you. Now, if your manufacturer is in China, then use an NNN agreement. This agreement requires non-disclosure, non-circumvention, plus non-use of your invention. Tip number six, if feasible, I always recommend building a prototype. The prototype will help you to understand the invention a lot better. Should you make the part bigger or smaller? Should it be lighter or heavier? The prototype will help you as well as others better understand the different aspects of your invention that you can get a patent for. Tip number seven, for domain names, I recommend registering your primary domain name before you start the trademark application process. You don't want to go through the trademark process only to find that you can't register your domain name. Also, when you register your domain name, be prepared to register more than one. You should register the plural and singular versions of your primary domain name and also any common misspelling. Tip number eight, get a federal trademark registration. You'll be spending a lot of time and energy building up your brand and you don't want to be forced to change your brand in the future because you didn't get a federal trademark registration. Now the registration doesn't guarantee that you'll be able to use your mark in the future, but when you do go through that process, one of the steps is a trademark search. The trademark search looks for other people's mark that you might be infringing upon if you were to start using your desired mark. You don't want to find out later on after you've manufactured your product, labeled it with your mark, spent all of your money only to find out that you've been infringing on someone else's mark. At that point, you have to change your mark. 